Hello and welcome to today's video. This video will again be about an aspect of game theory and about a particularly important one. Today we introduce the concept of mesh equilibria. But before we do that, as a motivation for that concept, we'll try to analyze the game Prisoner's Dilemma that we have introduced before. So this section is called Nash Equilibria. Basically, the idea here is to find a combination of strategies such that no player wants to change to some different strategy. The idea behind this is that such a combination is stable in the sense that once we reach that point, no player will want to deviate. On the other hand, if we don't have a natural equilibrium, then one of the players can profit by changing. And as all information about a game is known beforehand, of course, both players can go through all possible combinations, find out if they will be satisfied with that combination, and find another one if they are not. So the idea behind this is that if both players do this analysis before they actually play the game, then the outcome will be a Nash equilibrium, necessarily. So the idea is kind of to ask what is the best strategy or what is the predictable outcome of the game. So what is the outcome of the game? And Nash's answer to this is the outcome of such a game could be a point where both of the players are satisfied in the sense that they do not want to change to some other strategy unilaterally. Now, as I said, let's first consider the example of Prisoner's Dilemma. Remember, Prisoner's Dilemma was defined by two payoff matrices. We had two strategies, those were either to confess or to deny a crime. And here's the payoffs. So for the row player, if both confess, then the row player gets minus three and the column player gets the same. If both deny, they both get minus one. If one player confesses and the other denies, then the one who confesses will get zero. So in this case, if the row player confesses, then he will get zero. If the column player confesses, then he will get zero. And the one who denies will then get minus seven, seven years in prison. So here's a minus seven, and here's a minus seven. So that was prisoner's dilemma. Now let's try to analyze the possible strategy. Then we try to analyze this from the row player's point of view first. So let's start with the row player. Now for the row player, AR is of course the relevant matrix here. Let's copy that here so that we have it again. Let's assume 
the current player chooses some fixed strategy and then see how the role player could react to that. And we will not use a fixed number, but we'll use a, a general strategy, a general pair for the column player. So we'll say that x star, we use the strategy x1 star, x2 star. And let's say this is a strategy in the strategy set of the column player, an SC. Let that be columns strategy. Then the route player can react to that strategy. And for the route player, the part that is fixed about the game, of course, is column strategy. He can't do anything about that. So if we're looking at the payoff or the expected payoff of the route player, the part AR times X star is fixed. There is no change in that part. So this is minus 3, minus 7, 0, minus 1, times x1 star, x2 star. Now remember, the strategy means that we have entries between 0 and 1 such that the sum of those two entries is 1. Now in particular, if we only have two possible entries in our vector, then one of those must be equal to 1 minus the other. So x2 star is equal to 1 minus x1 star. And of course, we can make use of that. So basically, x1 star is the probability that the column player confesses, and 1 minus x1 star is then the probability that the column player denies any involvement in the crime. So what do we get here if we compute this? Well, let's see, we have minus 3x1 star, and then minus 7x1 star, and minus 1 minus x1 star. So let's simplify this a little, we get minus 3x1 star. And here we get a minus 7 plus 1, that's minus 6x1 star, and minus 1. So this is the payoff vector once column has taken her decision. And that means Rao will now be able to choose. If Rao plays a pure strategy, then he will either get this payoff if he chooses to play Confess, or you get this payoff if he chooses to play deny. Or of course you can also use a mixed strategy and then the payoff will be a combination of those two. So let's make another assumption. Let's assume Rao plays the strategy y1, y2. That's a Rao strategy. And again, as y1 plus y2 is 1, this is equal to y1 and 1 minus y1. And the expected payoff for Rao Well, this would then be y transposed a r times x star. y transposed is y1 and 1 minus y1. And we have already computed this part here, which is this exactly. So we get minus 3x1 star and minus 6x1 star minus 1. So if you compute this, the result here 
is minus three x one star y one plus minus six x one star minus one times one minus y one. So now we want to uh, <clears throat> assume the role of the row player. That means we're interested in choosing x1 correctly. So let's isolate the effects of y1. What we have here is, on the one hand, minus 3x1 star. On the other hand, this here, minus y1, minus 6x1 star. So that's a plus. 6x1 star, and then we have minus y1 and minus 1, and that is a plus 1. And then we have the parts without an, a y1, so we get minus 6x1 star and minus 1. And those parts, the route play doesn't have any influence in it those, but of course he has an influence on that part here. So let's uh, simplify before we complete our analysis here. What we get is this is 3x1 star plus 1, and this is minus 6x1 star minus 1. The raw player will want to maximize his payoff. So what is he going to do? Well, as I said, this is irrelevant. The raw player has no influence in that part. He can choose the y1. So the interesting question is, what is this factor going to be? And all we know is the x1 star is somewhere between 0 and 1. So this is a positive factor. This here is between 0 and 3 then. And adding the 1, that surely is a positive factor here. Now to maximize payoff, the route player is going to select a value of 1, the maximal possible value for y1, because that goes with a positive factor. If that factor were negative, he would select a 0. So to maximize payoff, row will select y1 equals 1. And then, of course, y2 will have to be 0. And the important factor is to note that this is regardless of the strategy that column chooses. It doesn't really matter what value x1 star has. That factor is always positive. And that factor cannot be influenced. So whatever column does, Raw will always choose 1, 0 to get the best possible outcome for himself. So this is regardless of column's strategy. So we now know what Rao does. It doesn't even depend on what Column does. And of course, Column can do the very same analysis. So Column would say, well, if I choose a strategy of x1 star, x2 star, then what will Rao think? Well, Rao will think exactly this, and Rao will come to the conclusion that he'll choose 1, 0 as his strategy. So if Rao chooses 1, 0 as his strategy, how am I going to react to that? So that's what Column is going through now. I mean, with the analysis above, Colin knows. that Rao will choose 
one, zero. And of course the question is now how should color react? What's the best response to that strategy of Rao? Let's have a look at the payoff for Cullen. And remember, we need a different matrix now for Cullen. We need this matrix AC. This is not the same payoff as for Rao, because the payoff matrix is different. So let's copy this here. This is the matrix AC. That is column's payoff matrix. So the payoff for column will be the following. Column will play the strategy x1 star and 1 minus x1 star. We already said that. And we know that Rao will play 1, 0. So we have 1, 0 transposed times AC times x1 star 1 minus x1 star. So that is 1, 0, and then we have this matrix here, minus 3, 0, minus 7, minus 1, and x1 star, 1 minus x1 star. Now let's first compute this here, 1, 0 times this matrix, um, and then we get minus 3 for the first column and minus 7 for the second column. So basically that's the first row of the matrix. And x1 star 1 minus x1 star. And if we compute this, the outcome is minus 3x1 star minus 7 times 1 minus x1 star. So what we get in the end is, uh, let's see, we have minus 3x1 star plus 7, so that's 4x1 star minus 7. Again, that minus 7 cannot be influenced, that is constant, but of course this factor can be influenced. Again, Cullen wants to maximize her payoff. So what is she going to select? First, she's going to select weight of 1 for x1 star, because that factor 4 here is positive, so the maximum possible payoff occurs if x1 star is 1 and not 0. Okay? So to maximize your payoff, column chooses x1 star equals 1, and consequently x2 star equals 0. So the strategy for column is also 1, 0. So what that means is, in our analysis, for both players, the optimal strategy is 1, 0. And remember that 1, 0 strategy was confess. So both players will confess. Now what is the consequence of that? Let's again have a look at the two payoff matrices. I'll copy those. So here's our prisoner's dilemma. And we've just seen that both will confess. So we're getting these two payoffs here. Everyone goes to jail for three years. And you can see this, this point is stable in the sense that no one will want to change their strategy in that point. Let's have a look at Rao first. If we are in this point, both confess. Would it be preferable for Rao to play a different strategy? Would it be preferable to switch to deny? Well, if he switched to deny, then he'd get seven years instead of just three. So no, he will surely not do that. 
how about column? If we're in this point, would it be preferable for column to switch to a different strategy, to deny? Now you can see here, if column would switch to deny, then he get a pair of minus seven, and she get a pair of minus seven. So she will go to jail for seven years instead of just three. So no, column will not change the strategy. That means this point is in equilibrium in the sense that both will select this and no one will want to deviate from that point. And that's the important outcome of this analysis here. This pair of strategies, 0, 1, 0, 1, so confess, confess, is an equilibrium. And that means no player has an incentive to unilaterally choose a different strategy. Unfortunately, there is a point that would actually be more desirable, and that is this point here. So if both players would choose to deny, each would get a sentence of one year. That means both players would be better off if they chose to deny. Problem here is, this is not an equilibrium strategy. And what that means is that if one player denies and the other confesses, then the one who confesses will have an advantage. He'll be even better off. This is what leads both players to confess, and that is what leads, what leads to a worse outcome for both of them. So the problem here is there is no coordination. There is no cooperation. One player will always betray the other. And of course, the other player knows that. So no player will choose to deny, both will choose to confess. And that is why this game is called Prisoner's Dilemma. Here's the dilemma. They could be better off if they cooperated. There's no means of enforcing that cooperation. And that means they will not cooperate. Because individually, they will gain from their betrayal. Okay, so notice that this might be an even better outcome. So choice of 0, 1, 0, 1 would yield a better outcome for each player, not just for the society as a whole, but for each player. But that point is not in equilibrium. And that means each player has an incentive to change his or her strategy. And that is individually a clever choice, because individually changing unilaterally would lead to a better outcome. But of course, the other player will do the same thing. So they end up in this point where both confess, because that is individual, the rational decision. So here's the dilemma. And that's a situation that you'll encounter often. Um, and you'll probably analyze in some economic settings as well, um, where several players have to make a decision. And if all the players play just for their own good, with their own gain in mind, then they will all reach a point where all are worse off than if they had cooperated. 
And of course, the answer of economists to that dilemma would be there must be a way to either enforce um, cooperation or at least make cooperation easier or to kind of include the true cost in this scenario. And of course, that is something that the scenario does not encompass. The cost of betrayal in reality might be high. So if there is something like revenge, retaliation, um, and of course, both players might have a scenario in mind where they act as a witness. The other player goes to jail for seven years, but once those uh, seven years are over, the other player might come back to retaliate. And of course, you could you could add those to the payoffs. You could incorporate those additional costs, and then the game will look different. And then, of course, the outcome will be different. So all of that is highly dependent on the actual set. So that was an application of the concept of Nash equilibrium to find out how this prisoner's dilemma game is going to end. Now let's formally define what a Nash equilibrium is. So we need a bimatrix game. Let a bimatrix game be specified by payoff matrices in R and AC in R to the M by N. And then first part of the definition, we first define what a best response is. I also computed that before. So the idea is that if one player fixes his or her strategy, and of course the other player can think of a best response of a strategy that maximizes his or her payoff under the condition that the other player sticks to his strategy. That's the best response strategy. And remember, we computed a best response for the row player, for even for a general strategy of a column player. So, for a fixed strategy, x star in sc, A strategy is called Y bar in SR is called a best response to X star. If, and the condition here is the payoff of this strategy Y bar for the row player that is computed like this here, y bar times post times ar times x star. That payoff is higher or at least equal to the payoff for all possible row strategies. So y times post ar x star. And know that x star does not change here, just the y changes. So that needs to be higher for all y in Yes, R. And of course, you can reverse that very definition. So, for a fixed strategy of the row player, there's also a best response of the column player. Let's write that down as well. For a fixed strategy, we call it Y star of the row player. The strategy x bar in SC is called a best response to y star. If, and the condition is the same basically, if 
y star transpose a c so the column here maybe times x bar is the best possible expected payoff so it's greater or equal to y star transposed a c times x for all x in s c the column strategy set And now a pair of strategies will be called a Nash equilibrium if each strategy is a best response to the other. So basically no player wants to unilaterally change the strategy because he or she already has the best response to whatever the other player does. So a pair of strategies we call those x star y star with x star in sc and y star in sr is called a Nash equilibrium if x star is a best response to y star and y star is a best response to x star or in other words formally those best responses here what that means is y star transposed a r times x star so y star is the best response for the row player to x star of the column player so that means this is greater or equal to all other strategies of the row player for the payoff matrix of the row player so for all y in sr and similarly for the column player now we use y star transpose a c times x star so for the column player we need the payoff matrix a c and that is greater or equal to y star transposed a c times x for every possible strategy x of the column player so x star is the best possible response to y star for x in sc and finally the wording here part three of the definition the Nash equilibrium is called a Nash equilibrium in pure strategies if both of those strategies are pure strategies and otherwise, in a general case, we'll sometimes refer to that equilibrium as a Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. So a Nash equilibrium x star y star is called Nash equilibrium in pure strategies if both x star and y star are pure strategies and the general case is often referred to as a Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. So remember a mixed strategies Nash equilibrium means the strategies could be pure 
but they don't have to. And of course, we already, we already seen an example, so let me just add that here as a quick side note. Because we've done the computations already. So this pair of strategies 1010, that was a Nash equilibrium for prisoner's dilemma. And it's even one in pure strategies. Now, of course, the interesting question here is, if we employ the solution concept of a Nash equilibrium for a game, so if we say that a Nash equilibrium will be a point that is naturally chosen by the players, then of course we are interested in the question of whether there is a Nash equilibrium in the game, and also we want to know how to compute it. We're going to settle the first question right now, with the following brief theorem, that is the theorem by John Nash. And that simply says for a bimatrix game, there is always a Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. So possibly not in pure strategies, but in mixed strategies we'll always find a Nash equilibrium. So the other question here is, of course, how do we compute that? How do we get that Nash equilibrium? Now we know it exists, but of course we want to know what it is. Well, in other words, what are the optimal strategies? What are the mutual best responses for each of the players? And this analysis, as you might imagine, may become hard in this bimatrix case, but there is a more special case where it becomes easier and actually tractable with the math that um, you know so far. And we'll have a look at that special case in one of the upcoming videos. And of course, I hope I'll see you then.